We'll spend three nights in Memphis at T.O. Fuller State Park. Plan on seeing Bass Pro Shop. Plan on walking across the Mississippi River on the on the Great River Crossing, which is along Interstate 55. Plan on seeing the Sultana Museum. And there may be a few things unplanned. Okay, we're at the big river crossing in Memphis. You have to park on the street and walk to the walk to the crossing, so that's where we're headed now. We had uh, we had an exciting morning. A ratchet that I had used to tie the bikes onto the front of the truck by crack rubbed a hole in the sidewall of my tire. So we found a bike shop this morning called All About Bikes Incorporated in Memphis. Went there and they were replacing the tire and they sold me a new bike rack. So we'll pick that up before five today when they close. I'm still not sure, but I think this bridge across the Mississippi River is, high, is Interstate 55. Not real sure, but anyway, there's a bike path attached to it. Okay, we're walking onto the bike path. Still don't know the name of the bridge, but this sign might tell us. Okay, bicycles, dogs, and pedestrians. Hmm. I'm gonna mind you. Look, it's a railroad crossing. A railroad crossing? Interstate 55 and this bike path. Okay, it's not very wide. Oh no, I see water. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's not moving, so it's steady. I think I can do it. Boy, I bet that water's cold. There's the pyramid. You can see that in the distance. We'll be there in just a little bit. this bridge doesn't fall down. <laughs> it's cold this morning. I've already put my long pants on. Too cold to walk across it in shorts. Of course, Lincoln is walking across it in shorts. Nope, 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 nope. I'm taking, um, is it recording? Yeah, it is. Nope. <laughs> I like it.
my first initial thoughts were that that doesn't look like a mile across. But as I think about it, I believe that that is the island. I don't think that's the other side of the bridge. Oh, we just crossed the state line. We're walking from Tennessee to Arkansas. But I don't think that's Arkansas. I think that's that island in the middle of the Mississippi. We'll find out shortly. At first I thought that was the island right up there. I'm just not sure. It's supposed to be a mile across, and that sure didn't look like a mile, and it doesn't feel like we've walked a mile. Okay, we're approaching the, Memphis, the West Memphis side of the bridge, and I don't like the looks of that tunnel. But I guess we're going in it. I thought this walking bridge was attached to Interstate 55, but we're really attached to this train track. I see the cars on Interstate 55 a good ways, a good ways over there. You can see it over there. You can see Interstate 55 traffic way over there, and that doesn't seem to be attached to this bridge that the trains are on and that we're on. What are you looking at, Cheryl? Is that a boat down there that has crashed? Looks like a boat in the back, doesn't it? I don't know what you're looking at. Down there on the shore. I think it's a crashed boat. Cheryl thinks that's a crashed boat. Do you still think it is? Okay, Cheryl thinks that's a crash boat. Turned upside down. Oh boy. Cannot get Lincoln in front of this camera. What? Look at what? <laughs> Land. Uh oh. What? Is that water? Uh huh. Oh. Yeah, this was the island. We're not across the stinking bridge. Yeah. Second thought. That's not more water. That's farmland. We are across the river. So if the bridge is a mile long. That doesn't mean the river's a mile long. This bridge goes way across the river. Of course, I don't like being that high over farmland. Still see the pier, man. Okay, I can't help it, I've got to say it. I see light at the end of the tunnel. We're coming to the end of the bridge. Well, I'm not tired. My feet are a little sore, but that did seem like a long mile. Explore West Memphis, Arkansas. Restaurants, hotels. I just felt sure they would have a taxi stand over here somewhere. Not everybody wants to walk back across it. 
it looks like Mama Cheryl and Lincoln are going on into Arkansas. Lincoln, if, if you're out of breath, are you? Because if you are, you could get some air right over there. What? You can get air over there. Air. Okay, what's this river called? The something Mississippi. I'm family, I'm sure. The blank Mississippi. What is it? You're recording. And I'm telling you that that word starts with M-I. What could it be? It's what they call the Mississippi. The blank Mississippi. The Mississippi. M-I-G. Mississippi. M-I-G is the first three letters. Pop D, I did not pay attention. M-I-G-H. I don't know. M-I-G-H-T. Think of a word that starts with M I G H T. There's only one more letter in it. Uh, M I G H T Y. Why would they call it the mighty? The, say it, the whole three words. Mighty Mississippi. Yep, that's what this river's called. <laughs> We made it. We made it back across the Mississippi. We only had one casualty. Mama Cheryl. She didn't have an accident. Her her knee joint and her hip joint have made it to where she can barely walk. So I don't know how long this is gonna last. Show us you can walk, Cheryl. As fast as you can go? Oh, brother. Anyway, I, we got across the finish line and it's right in front of us. Lincoln clocked it at 1.1 mile. Look, she's walking. I'm not sure if she's walking or if her shoes are walking, you know. Some shoes are walking shoes. I might have to get her some running shoes. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, here's a quiz for you. Which train's moving? The green one? 
The top one or the bottom one? Can you tell Cheryl? What, what? Which train's moving, the top one or the bottom one? Bottom. <laughs> well, how can you be sure? Because the top because one's I'm not moving. Because I'm here and that EMP has not moved. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's that would be a giveaway. <laughs> yeah. So in Memphis, if you're going to walk across the big river crossing, there's really no parking lot. You park on the street. It's free, but you park on the street. And I've read, I've read that there's a lot of crime in this area and that they break into cars and I've been anxious about it. Right now we're ending our trip. We're getting back to the truck and I, I see this truck pulling right up close to mine. That doesn't mean they're fixing to break into a car. They just do look suspicious. We'll see who gets that out of it. We'll see if they look suspicious. Or if they look like joggers in shorts and running shoes that are fixing to run across the bridge. Okay, that's shorts. Oh, Cheryl's hobbling back to the truck. She has got a problem. Okay, they don't look suspicious. Here I am picking up my bike. I can... The destination is on your left. All About Bikes, LLC. Arrived. All About Bikes repairs. Man, I'm really excited to get this new bike rack. It's a Swagman. Bought it at All About Bikes, LLC in Memphis. It's sturdy. I, I mean, the roads in Memphis are not the best in the world, and it's not jumping, shaking up and down like my other one was, so I'm glad to have this. Okay, coming up to the Bass Pro Shop, the Pyramid in Memphis. Cheryl and Lincoln are waiting on me inside at the restaurant. Been to get my bike. So I'm just getting here. They boarded for me, so maybe I'm not too late. Here's Lincoln and Cheryl eating in the Bass Pro Shop. I think the name of this restaurant is Uncle Buck's. I'll tell, I don't, I'm not going to say no oil. Uncle Buck's. I'll just say no. How do you say good. Pretty good restaurant. No sauce. Come to you, we're eating. You think we'll have to take a break from the camera? Mm-hmm. Bowling alley inside the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh-oh, they're already filling their buggy up. Show me your boat, Lincoln. So this is the boat you want for Christmas? Well, I think you sound spoiled. Spoiled? Well, you are. 
Or had you rather have the green one? Mm. I'm never going to get a bill for Christmas. I think you should know that. Had you rather have the one with the two consoles or the one with one console? See, this one's just got one. There's no reason to have two consoles. It just makes that person over there have a harder time getting up to stand up here. That one. Did you tell me you'd rather have that one? Look in it. No. No. No, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Why don't you like this? Yeah, this. You don't have much storage space in it. Are you in your office? Where are you going to put your batteries? This thing is so big down there. That's, that's, not, that's an ocean boat. That's for some rough water there. I'll do the, this is, look. Look how it That's an ocean boat, maybe. That's like we were in on uh, in South Dakota. That line boat. Yeah. How much does that one cost? You want my guess? No, look on that tag up there. Like 70000 Here you go. Was that close? $24,420. That's it? It's what? 24000 Here's Lincoln checking out of the Bass Pro Shop. He's really anxious to see how much money he spent. He's guessing 160, but he doesn't know. Cheryl found a bunch of reward cards. How many did she find? Of what? Those gift cards. How many cards did Mom Cheryl find? Three. Three? Three. How much? Like, all together? Yeah. 75. Well, where are you going to get the rest of the money? Those stuff I brought. You brought money? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Go down there. Parked at the Bass Pro Shop to see the light show on Interstate 40 Bridge across the river. Tomorrow night we'll park at Tom Lee Park, which is south of here, and we can see it from a side view. That'll be a lot better. But we're going to see what this looks like. It should, it's starting now. It's not quite dark. They'll do it at least every hour and Sometimes on holiday weekends, like this is Memorial Day weekend, they'll do it every half hour. Up until 10 o'clock, I think. Well, that's it. It lasted three minutes. I said we'd come back after dark tomorrow night. Wait, there it goes again. It would have made it easier for you could let that leg down to the floor. Here we are headed across the I-55 bridge on our way to see the Sultana Museum in Marion, Arkansas.
Banana moon pop. <laughs> the Sultana exhibit. Worst maritime disaster in U.S. history. Okay. Wait, why'd you give it to me? So you can film me. Walking inside? Oh, sure. You're a good filmer. You want to film it? Want to film it? No. You sure? You want to film it? Film the, film the mural to see all those people in the water. Wow. Then you can cut it off and come on in. There's the paddle wheel, and there's two smokestacks on it. I think one of those broke and fell over and started the fire. But in that picture, there's two smokestacks still standing. There's a Sultana Survivors Association. I'm assuming these are the names of all the people that died in the disaster. We're in the South, in Andersonville, Georgia, and in Cahaba, Alabama. Between these two prisons, in the 18 months prior to the end of the war, almost 50,000 men traversed through these two prisons. The conditions within them were horrible. More than half of the men who were brought to these prisons died in the prison. Those lucky few that survived battles such as Gettysburg, Antietam, Fredericksburg, and Chancellorsville found their way into the southern prisons of Cahaba and Andersonville only to run the risk of death within the prison. The survivors of those great battles and of the prison camps finally had hope. They knew that they were about to go home. The war was over. These ex-prisoners, anticipating their way home, were encamped just outside of Vicksburg, Mississippi, at a location called Camp Fisk, sometimes referred to as Four Mile Camp. They remained here several days preparing to be boarded on, on board the boat, the Sultana, at the Vicksburg Harbor. The Sultana was constructed in 1863, and it was built at a cost of only about $90,000.
It was, for its time, one of the uh, elite steamboats of the Mississippi River. It was 260 feet long, 36 feet wide, and 42 feet in width at the beam. It was built to be uh, 1,700 tons in weight, and, uh, and including freight, and yet it drew only four feet of water at the bow. The captain of the boat itself, J. Cass Mason, offered a bribe to one of the underling officers, a Captain Edward Tillinghast. This bribe was forwarded on to the assistant adjutant general in charge of boarding here in Vicksburg. And before it was finished, there would be six to eight men involved in paying and receiving bribes, receiving favors, and simply dereliction of duty. The Sultana, over a period of two days, was loaded with in excess of 2,500 passengers. Of those 2,500, over 2,200 were former prisoners of war from the Cahaba and Andersonville prison camps. They were squeezed on board the boat in a manner that many had to be carried on and laid in place, unable to move around because there was no room. It finally left Vicksburg, Mississippi, en route to Helena, Arkansas, then Memphis, Tennessee, then Cairo, Illinois, and finally to St. Louis. One of the four tubular boilers was extremely weak, and it had been repaired within the last two weeks just a small patch being placed over a very serious stress scene. The first morning after leaving Vicksburg, the boat arrived in Helena, Arkansas, where it picked up a little bit more freight and dropped off a few uh, passengers. A man by the name of T.W. Banks was set up to take a photograph, which turned out to be the final photograph ever taken. If you look at that photograph, you will see that the boat is tipping significantly to the port side because of an overburdened passenger list, because of too much weight shifting to the port side in order to be in the photograph. On April the 26th of 1865, the boat arrived in Memphis, Tennessee, where it uh, left off about 30 passengers and then immediately went directly across the Mississippi River to Mound City, Arkansas, where it took on an additional <coughs> load of coal for the remainder of the travel up the river. After the boat left Mound City, it began to move northward up the Mississippi River against a, a very high uh, river level, a river that was out of its banks and in a storm. At two in the morning, on April the 27th of 1865, the weakened boiler, stressed even further because of the extreme weight and the motion and the, the stress of the overflow of the Mississippi River, became overpressurized. One of the boilers, like most likely the weakened boiler that had been just patched earlier, exploded. With that explosion, Almost immediately, two additional boilers exploded. The explosions were very cataclysmic. It is estimated by some of the survivors that maybe as many as four to five hundred people were killed instantly, with their bodies blown into the into the air above the Mississippi River by the force of the explosion of three of these boilers. There were no survivors found after the first twelve hours, and approximately five hundred survivors of the explosion and fire were taken to Adams Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. Eventually, more than 200 of those survivors would die of wounds and burns while in the hospital and are now buried in the National Cemetery in Memphis. The curator of the museum was super informed, really loved her job, did a good job. It's an amazing story because so few people in American history have ever heard she of She told us things that I haven't it read about the disaster. One thing she told us is that even though the ship was overloaded, what really 
caused the ac accident and caused the boilers to get overloaded was when they unloaded their sugar cargo in Vicksburg. That took all of the that took all of the weight out of the yeah, center of the ship down at a so low level and and it made the it made the boat less stable because all of the passengers were lined around the sides which sort of overhung overhung the the size of the ship so it you know with the waves and the passengers moving around it would tilt from side to side and cause an extra strain on the boilers and like like the movie told us one boiler blew up Now back in Memphis, we rode by the Elvis Presley house and museum so that Lincoln could see that. He really didn't have a lot of interest in it, but he did like the one jet that Elvis owned. Not the big one, but the small plane. Walked him across the highway and let him see the wall. At it seems like every visitor that's been there has written their name on. He used to be into Elvis when he was younger, but he's out of that now. There's still a lot of tourists stopping by to go through Elvis's house and museum. Yeah, I like that chip better. Lincoln, you see the name on that big plane? You do see the name? Here we are at Graceland. Okay, let's go. the picture up so don't let me mess up. Back. Now I want to get a little more of the wall. You wouldn't write your name on the wall? No. Why?
day use area. Hoping to see the Olympic sized pool that they have at T.O. Fuller left, turn left. State Park. We saw where it was, but we didn't see the pool. So Lincoln's just getting some shots of the playgrounds, and there's a tennis court and ball fields. This is where the pool right, is. Man, how doing? We just couldn't see it. The weather turned cold on us uh, today, Sunday. It must have turned cold Saturday night. So it was good weather walking across the bridge. I mean, it wasn't hot. Well, that concludes Chapter 2 of our Great River Road Trip. Chapter 2 was all about our stay at T.O. Fuller State Park in Memphis, where we saw, well, the main reason we went there was to walk across the river on the Great River Crossing. Then we also saw, went to the Bass Pro Shop. We also went to the Sultana Museum over in Marion.